Hello there, we are back in the UEFI BIOS, and this time we're here to change some settings. In this video we get to configure the UEFI BIOS, and we are going to explore the following items. We will set up our boot options, customize our security settings, take part in some interface configurations, and even use the firmware backup and update tool. So let's begin. We want to configure our boot options. Now you'd think we'd jump straight into motherboard settings and hit boot, but technically we don't even have to go there. On the main UEFI BIOS screen, I can quickly and easily see my boot order listed in this horizontal toolbar. Now this is awesome because if I want my optical drive to be given more preference than something else, I can just click and drag that optical drive to the front of the list. And now it's being given the first boot order preference, such as the optical drive would be booted from before the hard disk drive or USB or anything else. This is great. Now this feature does depend on your motherboard and UEFI firmware, so let's take a look at the official method as well. We'll go into settings, and then I can go ahead and click on boot. And inside of here we'll see this massive list. Now before we just dive into this list, I'd like to take note of the boot mode select. With boot mode select here, I see that the default option is legacy and UEFI. It has been predicted that in the next couple of years, legacy will no longer exist. It is here at this time to allow our board to be backward compatible with devices that require legacy BIOS settings. If you'd like to, you can select the option and you'd actually be able to click UEFI only, as long as you know your devices will still be supported. Let's continue. So down below is my list. My current boot option one is set as my optical drive, the UEFI CD DVD. That's from my previous drag and drop maneuver. To modify this list, you can just click on any one of these items, such as, for example, boot option one, and I can choose what device will be booted first. For example, how about my USB key? There we go. And now that's first. You see that horizontal list from left to right has changed up above. We can also go and click on any one of these items and use the plus or minus arrows to move them up or down on the list as well. I personally like the drag and drop option we saw previously. Next, it's time to take a look at some security settings. Back to motherboard settings and then into security. We can find some important settings that we can configure. Here in the security settings, let's take a look at the passwords. The administrator password can be set to prevent other people from accessing and changing your bio settings. I'll click enter and we're going to make this thing, whew, there's already a password on it. It was Cisco. We're going to make it Cisco again. Create new password, Cisco. Confirm new password, Cisco. And now our administrator password is Cisco. If you want to change and save our BIOS, you're going to need that password of Cisco to do it. Now the user password down below, this is special. This can be set in order to prevent the operating system from loading on your machine until a user has entered the correct user password stored here in BIOS. Further, there's this feature called UKey. The UKey feature allows the BIOS administrator to dedicate a password to a specific USB key or flash drive. The USB key or flash drive will be needed to be plugged into your machine when a user wants to access the operating system of the machine. Wow! Never knew a USB flash drive could be so important. Let's continue on and take a look at some of the interface configuration settings. In the main settings area, we're going to go into Advanced. And instead of advanced, we're going to access the integrated peripherals. Within the integrated peripherals, we're going to find a good amount of settings to control. In this section, we have the ability to control the onboard LAN controller. This is our physical network card of the device. We can actually disable it here if we don't want to use it. We take a look at Wi-Fi and Bluetooth controller. We can also control if the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth components are allowed to be used on the computer. Think of this as using software to disable individual hardware components on the physical computer before the operating system even got a chance to use it. This is awesome. We can even make changes to how the SATA hard drives are going to be viewed. For example, I can click enter on SATA mode. We can have these SATA hard drives in the legacy IDE mode, current AHCI mode, or even by utilizing RAID. On top of all that, down below, we can customize that the SATA connections are allowed to be hot swappable as well. Let's back up a little bit and take a look at some USB configuration. In settings, advanced, USB configs, we want to take a look here and see that we can actually control both legacy USB support as well as 
disabling or enabling the USB controller itself. With this coming into mind, I want you to imagine this machine being in a high risk or high profile environment, and you have to be the IT professional that is concerned about people bringing in external USB flash drives. Problem identified and problem solved. Let's take a step back. Now what we want to take a look at is our Windows configuration. Right here in the Windows configuration, we can control how quickly our machine will boot. We can do this by activating Fast Boot or by activating MSI Fast Boot. These will allow your systems to come online more quickly by skipping some of the more thorough post verification tests. Next, we want to talk about what makes our machine boot in the morning, and that's our wake up event settings. We can click on this item to control what is allowed to wake up our computer and turn it on. There's a couple here, not too many. We have one last section to cover in this video, and we're going to go all the way back, and we're going to head over to mFlash. mFlash is all about firmware updates for our UFI BIOS. We will have the ability to save our current BIOS to a USB flash drive that's plugged in. This will allow us to restore it at a later date. We also have the ability to update the BIOS using this tool. So for example, I can click Save BIOS to Storage. And there is my disk, which I can click on, leave the default, and it's saving it to my USB flash drive. By using the update BIOS feature, we can load a BIOS file that is on a USB flash drive that is plugged into our machine. Now this is going to be awesome because this is your storing and recovery, especially when you have settings that you're concerned about and concerned about losing and not having in the future. We can use the update BIOS feature to actually select a file off of a USB thumb drive. And here, if I had a BIOS ready to go, I can click on the UFI flash thumb drive and be able to update the BIOS itself. Now, while every UFI BIOS will be a little bit different, you should have a much better understanding of how to configure some of the important settings.